Hallelujah. We're blessed to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. There's not a better place to be than in the house of the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Have your way in this place. your faithfulness oh god let me not forget to live in the valley look towards your goodness my heart set on who you are you're the light who consumes the dark the joy and the strength to lift up my voice and say I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your work. I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. Let's go to the top. Let's go to the top. My eyes, my eyes, my eyes on your faithfulness. Oh God, let me not forget to sing, to sing in the valley. Look toward your goodness. My heart is set, my heart set on who you are. You're the light that consumes the dark, the joy and the strength to lift up my hands and say, I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your work. I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. My feet, my feet on the battleground. Hey. My weapon will be my sound. I will not be silent. My song is my triumph. My feet, my feet on the battleground. My weapon will be my sound. I will not be silent. My song is my triumph. How about my feet? My feet on the battleground, my weapon will be my sound. I will not be silent, the song is my triumph. Come on, one more time. My feet on the battleground, my weapon will be my sound. I will not be silent, the song is my triumph. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your work. I want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates, come reckless with praise. I bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. Your glory. Sing, my soul will sing. My soul will make this place an altar. Make this place an altar. Sing, my soul will sing. My soul will make 
place an altar, make this place an altar. Sing, my soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. Sing, my soul will sing, my soul will make this place an altar, make this place an altar. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your work. I want to bring you more than words, I enter the gates, come reckless with praise, I bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks, I want to magnify your worth, I want to bring you more than words, I enter the gates, come reckless with praise, I bring a heart that wants you first, all for your glory, your glory. Your glory, your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. <gasps> thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes this natural man doesn't want to do what the spirit tells it to. Sometimes this natural way of thinking gets us into trouble, hallelujah. But we are more than conquerors through Christ. Come on. And we need to make this flesh. That's why we read in the, in the word where Paul said he whips his flesh. We need to whip our flesh into shape. We need to whip our flesh into shape. You see, because the spirit man is always hungry for God, is always hungry for the word, is always hungry to do what the Lord calls us to do. Amen? Amen. And that other guy needs to submit. And we learned about it before where the soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions, and that one needs to get in shape too. Because we can't be led by our emotions. Sometimes we can't be led by our will. Sometimes we can't be led by our mind. That's why we need the Spirit of God to lead us and this natural man and this soul needs to get right and submit to the spirit of God hallelujah thank you Lord Lord we desire to bring you praise we, we desire to make sweet sounds and for your ears Lord God that our worship would be as a sweet aroma oh Lord forgive us cleanse us from all unrighteousness forgive us Lord for the plan that you have for us goes far beyond what we can ever even imagine Thank you, Lord, for taking us out of darkness and putting us in your light. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's worship.
your mercy never failed me through all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God of your children. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did at Calvary and what you continue to do every day. We love you, Lord, because of you, Lord. Because of you, Lord, we have life. We have abundant life, eternal life. 
forgiveness, deliverance, healing. Thank you, Lord. And the list goes on and on. Have your way in this place, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Lord, for your servant. Thank you, Lord, that your word never returns void. Thank you, Lord, for every leader, for every laborer in this church and ministry. Thank you for our church family. Thank you for the associate pastors and their families. Hallelujah. Thank you for the worship pastor, the youth pastor, and for their families. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for the, the apostle of the house and for his family. Thank you for the missionary in the house and for his family. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and the lives of your children. Lifting up to you, Lord, this nation. We need help, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help our government, Lord God. We pray for every soldier at war, at home, our veterans, their families. Thank you, Lord. We pray for those who are going through so much suffering and calamity and all kinds of things going on around the world, Lord. Please help them to draw close to you so that you can draw close to them. We pray for those who are hurting, those who have lost loved ones, that you would blanket them with your peace, Lord. We love you. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place, Lord. We're so grateful that your goodness is all around us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Sunday about the surplus of God just hooking up the next train wagon let's go that's why I chose this uh, title the Gulf Stream G700 have you got yours yet <laughs> hallelujah praise be to God you know that Aircraft can fly like 7,500 nautical miles from here to Asia, loaded full with the wealth of the nations to bless people, ministries, churches, build churches. The top of the line, excellent equipment, upholstery, cost of fuel in the tens of thousands little parts costing thousands of dollars to repair but somebody gotta believe their big God for good things somebody here within our voice God's moving as your financial deliverer sometimes the enemy attacks when we start talking about the authority of believer or finances because he don't want us way up there winning souls but God has surplus in your life Shoo! surplus hallelujah. hallelujah praise be to God man we can go down to Callaway airport on the other side Where signature office is at, get on your board on board your aircraft, fly inner island. Hallelujah. We'll just turn to the scripture in Psalm twenty four one. Psalm twenty four one. And we'll all read. It says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein. Psalm 24, 1. The earth is, you may be seated. Thank you for honoring the word. You, the, the 
cattle on the thousand hills belongs to the Lord. God created that from Genesis for all of us, not for the devil and his crowd, but for this crowd. But it takes faith to get that vision before your eyes and you begin speaking and believing and declaring over all the news and the negative doubt and unbelief and the what the world says you cannot have. But the Lord is making avenues, opportunities, ways for you. And so tonight I just kind of want to share a little bit of some of the opposition, the government systems that are against you, but how God can reveal and show you a good foundation that, hey, I can believe here, I can pray for here for my family, and there is release. There's something coming in this coming days. Yes. And for some of you, it could be next week yes. or next month. Yes. Some supernatural things where you don't think things can move. But as you maybe check some of them crypto markets or something, <laughs> some things can explode unimaginably. Some zeros wiped out. But God has a way, you know. <laughs> natural and supernatural and all your work and your business and you know different things God will provide Whew. something some seed will come in your heart boom that's it some word bam I'm going to hang on to that I'm going to start declaring that for my health <coughs> that can be your wealth transfer wow divine health for your body wow provision of transportation wow education that is your wealth transfer not only money but all things the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and those who dwell therein we dwell in your world Lord that you've created Shh. the peace and quiet you know I was just thinking tonight too you know the the pastor in the excellence the cleanliness everything he can have a you know inner island jet you know <laughs> but but then I was thinking right. I if I have one jet gonna, gonna get some cobwebs and dust in the area on a counter by the gallery gonna get the you know the roach motel to catch the roaches or something like home or different things like that it's like oh no you know gotta step up the excellence and the cleanliness you know and so here in Psalm 24 it says the king of glory and his kingdom the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness the world and those that dwell therein for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitful, deceitfully he shall receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation he shall receive blessing of the Lord Whew. God wants to, desires, you know, from heaven, wants to release things here on earth onto you and your life more than you ask or imagine. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord will lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory in your life. Woo. No matter what's happening, situation, what the news saying, what your freezer you know checking for that ice cream and everything oh you know different things it's like might be a little bit bare but how much more the king of glory he's moving he's providing a little bit more in your bank accounts you know so when you 
go shopping and you get the deals like that, it's like, yeah, he's a king of glory. He's never left his throne. He sent Jesus here, set up the e example for us. And how much more, though we're living in a new, modern, very fast era, he can move in. He can provide and make a way for you, you know. And how much more the Holy Ghost shoo, can speak to your heart, give you direction, give you a word and understanding. It's like can change your life forever. In these times we're living in, it's like, wow, it's exciting times we're living in. This, this earth he created for his people, there's wealth and riches, surplus in it. Ooh, remember that grain from the abundance in Australia pouring down? <laughs> that grain. But it has to be a breakthrough thinking. He got to deposit and we got to see and think and believe in a new way, you know. Because like now in today's environment and what we grew up in the islands and immigrants and moving from the plantations to the dream city and the different hill houses on the hills and, you know, real estate, things like that. But it's like, God will provide. God will make a way. I see this place. He's led me to this. Hey, I'm going to speak for this. I'm going to believe this. God can make the house but you, you know, maybe renting and doing different things, but it's like God will provide. Things will shi shift in these times and world we we living in. God can make a way, Amen. and it's like, whoa! There's some people. They're flying with aircraft in this world, you know. Rested, don't have to fly 27 hours just to get to Northern Thailand. <laughs> maybe. 11 hours, you know, in one of these aircraft. All the way there, you know, it's like, wow, awesome, you know. I can pull into Mandalay Airport, big old runway airport in the country in the middle of Myanmar. And it's, you know, a couple, two flights, turboprop pulling in. It's like, wow. I was thinking, yeah, I just flew in, you know, s when I was there several years back, and turbo prop from uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand to Mandalay, and maybe 26 people in there, and I'm in the back and looking for my seat, and then um, I seen one gentleman, hey, sitting in my seat, you know, hey, excuse me, uh, I got this ticket, I, you know. Like sitting here, okay, he moved to another seat in the back, you know, little to find out. He's like the Myanmar, you know, the detective or stuff like that on, on the plane, you know. He's talking to the stewardess and stuff like that. So when we get to Mandalay, check into the counter, you know, you know it's like, you, you go over there. <laughs> to talk to this counter agent and you start questioning you what you doing here what you do let's see everything you got everything like that it's like oh wow I should have left left the guy alone in his in my seat <laughs> go sit in the other seat and no worry you know and just go through this whole thing you know but I thought wow you know in due season if I can do with an aircraft like this that I do with my you know, vehicle in two years, 75,000 miles, just driving all over and everything, you know, Ubering and Instacarting. It's like, oh, if I can put in about, you know, several hundred thousand miles flying here, you know, pull into um, Tachi Lake, Myanmar. Hey, Pastor Morris, look, here's some money, everything, you know, help your people out. We offload this and everything like that. That's the ideal situation when when the world is in its fullness, enjoy everything. But if today you pull in there, they're probably like, hey, who gave you permission to come here? Oh, we're going to detain your aircraft and your crew. You're going to have to w walk over the border with, with your bags or whatever, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, wow, things have to change, you know. In Matthew... I just will read a few scriptures just to prepare, lay the foundation, you know, see what Jesus spoke on con concerning money and, and finances. Just to keep our heart right and pure 
as we, you know, get blessed and overabundance. Matthew chapter 2, 11 and 12 says, And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, myrrh. Then being divinely warmed in a dream, say dream, dream, that they should return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. So God already spoke to these wise men, bring wealth to Jesus. He's gone on a journey into Egypt. He needs the wealth of gold and provision, and they did. And God blessed them too. Matthew 4, 8 through 10. It says, Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Amen. So even from the beginning, the enemy was tempting Jesus. I give you glory. I give you power. I give you the wealth. You bow down. How much more that spirit has pervaded, you know, through the evangelizations in Europe and later coming to America. I'll give you the wealth, the nation's provision. Just bow down, yield, give up your soul to me, turn from your principles, and people yield to that, you know the lust of money and everything. Chapter 6, verse 19 to 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And so it's easy for money and its wealth to pull you away from the things and the need for God. But God knows that to fund his end time harvest, you will need, you know, large sizable amounts this church has 22 missions outreaches has helped my friend in Myanmar Pastor Morris even this month he got $860 and you know it was a little bit short because I didn't tell him uh, I had to fix my Subaru with a <laughs> thermal control valve 1700 overall for the work and labor and everything you know and it's I'm thinking like ooh that's a good chunk to <laughs> wire transfer to my exchange in Kraken in San Francisco or Gemini in New York and put them into some future uh, crypto you know it's like wow it's like I gotta come back from that you know be patient dollar cost average it means every time you get a little bit over a period of time, you put a little bit, put a little bit, but make sure first you got to put your tithes and your offerings first to the church, let it increase, and then some of that extra, you can put a little bit, a little bit, believing for God to move in, in different avenues that we're believing for. Mark 11, 15 to 17. So they came to Jerus Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. Then he taught, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a, ho called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. You know, on the Mount of Olives, there's a 
church there that's called Church for All Nations right there. And it's interesting, you know, just seeing those old, scraggly looking olive trees still, you know, in that garden area and the mountain and stuff like that. It's like, wow, God will turn focus and attention back to Israel in these coming days and everything. And as we pray for and bless the nation of Israel, God will bring his blessings upon your life. 12, 41 to 44. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw two mites or about two pennies which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to him and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given in the tr into the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. So Jesus knew her heart and her willingness to give all that she had and he commended her to his disciples. You have so graciously through the years and years given and trusted God and planted seed, you know. And God says, test me. Prove me now if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I'll rebuke the devourer for, for your sake, you know. He says in Isaiah 45, 5, And I will give you the treasures of darkness, the hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I am the Lord your God. I will teach you to prosper in all that you set your hand to. It's like, wow, yeah. You can stand on that. He'll, he'll never fail you no matter what you're going to, what it seems like, and everybody panicking in the world. You can just stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. It's like, <laughs> to the breath of his nostrils, he will congeal the waters of the Red Sea. <laughs> overnight whoa there's your path there's your path wow he will move the waters for you when it seems impossible it's like that's your God the king of glory oh he loves you so much it's his earth the fullness thereof he knows everything in physics that moves on this earth and how much more he knows the banking system and the conniving men that are influenced by the enemy he can thwart them to the little things he can confound their wise schemes in his ways that will seem so funny to us but that's our God he has a sense of humor you know and we're seeing it we'll see it in these coming days I was brought to remembrance of this book by Pat Robertson. It's, it was called The New World Order. Yeah. And it's written, what, 32 years ago, back copyright 1991. And one of his chapters, it says, follow the money. And so I was looking that chapter and kind of wrote some things out about the source and the flow of money because we're dealing with surplus and money but they're the enemy is still trying to hinder the flow into your life and our life and we may not have known it by conniving and scheming men's but I let me just read some passages from from that book it says when the founders of the United States drew up our governing document, the Constitu Constitution, 
they were very specific about the creation of money. The key constitutional provision is Article 1, Section 8, which clearly charges the people's representatives, the Congress, with the power to coin money and regulate the value thereof. To ensure a national currency, the states of the new union were forbidden to make anything but gold or silver payment for debts. You know, the money always had to be backed by gold. You cannot just print an excess of trillions, but things have to be backed, and the, the, the dollars used to have silver certificate. You can turn in this and get that amount in silver. But the central bank idea first occurred to a canny Scotsman named William Patterson, who in 1694, which is a long time back in Europe, agreed to establish a joint stock company to loan 1.2 million pounds at 8% interest to William of Orange to help the king pay the cost of his war with Louis XIV of France. In return, the bank received a royal charter granting a number of privileges, including the right to issue notes, payable on demand up to the amount of and against the security of the bank's loan to the crown. And one of the bank governors was John Hublon of England said, on money which we create out of nothing, we will charge interest. So already the, the source and the influence of the enemy for them to get greedy and rich and out of the paper that comes from trees and the money they will issue to the people through wars. When wars happen, these guys feed this war, this war. If any new wars come in, ho, 450 billion from the U.S. going towards, you know, Ukraine and different things and siphoning to peoples and things like that. Or if there's other wars, it's like they're funding both sides so then they can get back the, the loan and the payment with interest. And that, it says, but the centers of European finances could not rest until they had brought the power house of the new world into their orbit. We in America was the new world. So in 1902, Paul Warburg, an associate of the Rothschilds and an expert on European central banking, came to this country as a partner in the powerful Kuhn, Loeb, and Company in New York. Warburg was to become the catalyst when joined with the Rockefeller and Morgan banking interests to bring about the create, creation of a central bank for the United States. Then, in November 22, 1910, Paul Warburg was the key to drafting the Federal Reserve during a s secret expedition to Jekyll Island, Georgia. They had one of the banking families at a big resort over there. They had this big meeting. They went down there. And this was controlled by Congress with majority of its members selected by the private banks that would own its stock and control America. And in this group that went down from New York, New Jersey area to Georgia for this secret meeting, there was a Senator Nelson Eldridge and A. Piet Andrews, Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, Frank Vanderlip, President of Rockefeller National City Bank of New York, Henry P. Davison, Senior Partner of J.P. Morgan Company, Charles D. Norton, President, Morgan, Dominated First National Bank of New York, Benjamin Strong, another Lieutenant of Morgan and Paul Warburg, the true craftsman. So it's the enemy uses men from the European times and to America and you know there's good people in Congress who stood up and Pat Robertson's father also you know they, they fought against this and there, there was a time even Kennedy was going to expose the Federal Reserve and shut them down. But in their power sources, they, they assass assassinated him.
there are still forces over the past years as Trump's been in office they understand all it is history and workings and how back in 1871 our republic was usurped and they create a a corporation to run simultaneous with our government you know and, and way to tax the people then you create the IRS and even today you know what's who's in government boosting the IRS to collect from the people you know and some of them will be armed in days coming 87,000 it's like oh there needs to be some changes so there's some forces in the white hats and good people and our nation behind the scenes working fighting it's like a spiritual battle things are going to be happening and in days to come, weeks to come, months to come, some things are happening. And even in, in the world, they're communicating with different leaders and everything, and there's, you know, things in the digital realm that they're moving and uh, ways to work the system and everything because, you know, the current system is printi printing out trillions and trillions and a new stimulus package of more trillions of paper money, you know, to deplete the system but God it, no matter what man connive and scheme and everything like that God rises up in his people he gives his people dreams vision and revelation and a hope and it's like ha 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 in your heart you know no matter what systems of man and banking situations God will make a way because tomorrow Thursday and Friday in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, they're having the Central Bank International Symposium, they call it. And so, all these banking bigwigs coming in to hear Fed Chairman Jerome Powell speak, talking about the economy, the inflation, and situations and they all patting themselves in their on the back and telling how they're controlling the rest of the sheeple under their thumb and everything and bragging who has the l latest model of G700 you know <laughs> the biggest one you know it's like one of us gotta go fly in there with, with your aircraft and give macadamia nuts and everything and says Hey, you guys may be here, but even though we're poor, we stay on the island. And we can drive to Lahaina every day and see the islands and the coast and everything. It's like, wow, it's so nice. We're so thankful, you know. We're blessed. We may not own all the, the lands or the waters and everything, but it's our home. It's our backyard. It's like we're thankful, you know. It's like, wow. But yet he's going to pour out his millions, speaking millions over some people in here, wealth, so that he can help some of the hardships and the people that we see around and things like that. But there has to be systems that they come first to Christ. And, you know, what you pour into them can change them and, and change the different things like that. But God has a way. So there's a new financial monetary system when this current system and man system crashes Jesus has plans and purposes in, in line and just the other morning about 4 o'clock I, I got up you know and Sometimes I see my clock, my red digital clock. It'll say four, 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 and then I looked it up. It's like an ang angelic number, you know. The Lord trying to tell me and kind of like remind me, hey, His angels keeping protection, everything. Amen. And then, then it's like, hey, there's no light around and everything, so it's it's like dark. It's like, wow, what's going on? 
And so there was a power out- outage, you know. And I'm thinking, wow, I- I've been looking at some warnings and this one prophet guy was saying, yeah, when this great reset comes, there'll be three days of darkness. And after that, 10 days of stay in your house and uh, eight hours a day each day, continued programming of what you should do and what the reset is and new things are coming and new banking provision and Nisara and Jashara. It's like, what's Nisara? It's like national eco- economic safety and Recovery Act, a way where the government can give back unto the people all that was stolen from you and all your taxes you paid to the illegal entities of the IRS and the wealth of the nations and the gold in Europe and everything, the Vatican and England, coming back unto the people. And Jeshara is the global economic security and Recovery Act to help the nations of the people, especially maybe Myanmar. They're in lockdown. They need to be released and set free. And their oil and jade and wealth rights coming back to them. Churches planted, getting set free. And God, in, in days to come, will restore back and bring back revival. It's like, yeah, all right, praise the Lord. You know, it's coming. And in Exodus, it is. I. I was looking first thing in the morning, no one light, put on the candle. Exodus, I know something about the light. Exodus, I see, chapter 9, verse 16, it says, In this, indeed, for this purpose, I have raised you, you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Who? To Moses, but how much more? In this time, he's risen you up. So through you, his name can be, be declared to the people who are fearful, questioning, wondering. You got the answers. Man, you young people come here without realizing every day, every time under the anointing. You go back sometimes in your classrooms and everything and people talking or not listening to the teacher and stuff and you're wondering, where's the anointing? (laughs) Where's the anointing? It's boring in here, you know? Oh, we come to church. It's like like electricity listening under the anointing, under the spout where the glory comes out. And you may not realizing every day, every day, every time God's imparting, imparting life into you. It's like, whoo, you feel cleansed, refreshed, going forth from here each time. Exodus 10, 21 through 23. It says, this is about the ninth plague where the darkness came. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. (laughs) God, your Father, the Lord of glory, he'll give you light. He'll give you provision. He'll give you divine health, strength, and life. Just don't lose sight of that and your words become negative and says, oh, you know, woe is me, nothing good happens and everything, and you bind up the angels from moving on on the Lord's behalf to help you. But how much more in your darkness is like, praise the Lord, I'm looking for the light, I'm looking for the light, amen. And so I went outside, you know, to look at the neighbors, no light, further down street lights, no light. But towards the back of my uh, 
yard, there was a little light. And so I'm thinking, oh, that's a, a small little solar light, <laughs> solar power light to give a little bit light over there. So then it dawned on me, it's like, wow, better go look on the market for a good solar uh, panel and, and light and a storage of battery and then next time, you know, you'll have a uh, light energy and things like that. And I, and I was talking to my brother, he said, hey, what you was using for a flashlight? And he said, oh, my bicycle light. I We charge them on the USB port. And so I'm thinking, wow, yeah, get one for mom. So he ordered one on Amazon because they have free Prime, he said. So it's like, okay. Because I went to Walmart. I look on their glass counter area behind, you know, for some batteries. C and D batteries, some expensive. It's like, oh, man, <laughs> I couldn't buy anything. Why? What I was using in Thailand. Candles. Oh, where's the candle section? <laughs> I go look at candles. Buy the cheapest candles I can get. It's like, wow, it's still a good deal, you know? <laughs> Things like that. It's like, wow. God gives us wisdom and preparation. And I was talking to Brother John a couple of weeks ago. I said, you know, John, I, I felt led. Uh, I went fill my five-gallon jug and one-gallon with a non-ethanol for a little Honda generator I have, just in case, you know, if things come up, you know. So, and I was thinking, oh man, if I'm four o'clock, if it goes past eight o'clock and the ice cream starts melting or something like that, you know, I think gonna have to uh, crank up that Honda. <laughs> but then the power came back on, you know, and, and things got better and some of the street lights were off. Uh, in the morning and things like that, you know. So it's like, you know, God has natural and the su supernatural working together makes an explosive force for God. That's what Ken Jr. would always say. The natural and the supernatural coming together make an explosive force for God. So... God has a way and a preparation for us in this life. Randy, you see the time? 808, <laughs> the time. Hawaii, 808. Wow. Praise the Lord. Because, uh, you know, Kalena, tomorrow she's flying to Arizona. So you, you go to a new zip code. But God has a new start, new opportunities. You know, you're young yet. And, you know, just remembering the days, shipping my car to Long Beach and driving it across several days to get to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Or even in my days from Maui, flying into Seattle, Washington and waiting at the airport to early morning to catch a bus to Missoula, Montana and the old kind of western American town and courthouse and everything, waiting for the dawning of the day without car and anything, and no Ubers or anything back then, so we had to you know, get a taxi or something to the campus and the dorm room and everything that started and things we just had to believe God and get through you know and um, times where the first year of after being four years in the Navy and then using the GI Bill and going to school and the first year taking the algebra examination test to see where they can place us and you know, I had forgotten a lot of things and had to go kind of like to some basic math again <laughs> in freshman and things like that. And, you know, kind of like sad that night and like starting, you know, Lord, help me, you know, away from home and things like that and a new environment <laughs> stuff. But it's just we're at that season and believing and, you know, 
in that four years, I finally started going to a Catholic church down the street to get saved and uh, understanding and everything and remembering my living Bible that I had, I got when I was in the Navy. Because this one guy from Kauai, his name was Jeffrey Saflor, he said, yo, his mother told him to read this living Bible while he in the Navy. And so I got me one and just kept it and just kind of try to be spiritual a little bit, going to the Catholic church, growing from there, everything like that, you know. It's like, whoo, that was a long time. But it's kind of like how we um, went through our days and little things remember, little bit seeds because also I live near St. Anthony School. And as a you know, elementary... Uh, maybe elf school days, passing through that school, everything, and one of the priests, he gave me this book. It, the title was, Oh God, It's Me, Anna. So some little salvation, or this girl Anna had to pray out to God and stuff like that, and I um, I read it a day or two or something, and then when I saw the priest again, a um, few days later he said hey where's the book make sure you get it back to me like that you know I need it you know oh, okay 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 I better get that book back to you you know <laughs> but all through these years you know the seed and other people who have gone through you know a place when people with wealth have invested in a land and the graveyard and and, and s still maintained you know a source of education for people and how much in these times, everything, you know, your desire for school and education and abilities to create things, whether you plan in a church in northern Philippines or building an educational center here or a new facility, you know, on the island, God, phew, supernatural wealth in these days pouring out in the midst of what's happening all around you you know in these God, end times God is bringing forth revival harvest <laughs> one of this one of the windows of opportunity as God brings you income streams there's a a blockchain technology that's happening happening so from the internet this world is moving into blockchain digital situations where even Colombia has made all their real estate on the blockchain digitized recorded cannot be changed the deeds of what is purchased is, is locked up in, in, in that El Salvador Nayib Bukele the president has declared their country a um, cryptocurrency country where even the poor unbank through their cell phones and through uh, different chosen currency uh, cryptos they, they can invest into you can go to some uh, beachfront surfing area where Americans and other people are there and go to up a taco stand and the lady will ask you you want to pay in cryptocurrency or pesos and they have a choice just like that making the changes and stuff like that they have natural volcanic power where they can have their mine their mining rigs through free energy produce all their proof of work coins and things like that you know even the Central African Republic is also going into some of that direction to get off of the loans and everything from Western nations into um, this blockchain world. But I mentioned dreams too. Even in this world, there's people. You, s you see them on you know, YouTube, you type in uh, Christian prophecy on different uh, crypto coins and stuff like that. And it's like people are seeing, you know, certain graphs 
oh yeah I prayed the night before asked the Lord which coin I can invest in and everything and they see a, a certain coin they see a graph go up and down and then up and skyward you know and you think how in the world in the natural this coin of point zero 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 one which is just fractions of a cent you know how can it skyrocket and burn off all of their um, tokens you know to reach one dollar five cents or something and make them millionaires and everything like that it's like God can use the, the foolish things of the world to baffle the central bankers all the Wall Street and things like that and uh, just recently you know some other guy engineer guy in Singapore you know he said yeah I was working and I saw this vision and there was like five like, like Batman figures but they were orange with kind of like mass and everything and it's like later on I was talking to my wife this looked like the Shiba Inu coin or something and then how that one would rise up and everything like that or his wife too earlier posted on the internet how she saw this orange fox like dog you know and a big blowtorch was burning whoosh, burning at the dog and everything like that and later on she woke up and she, she realized oh this 549 trillion coins of Shiba Inu is going to get burned off and supernatural people are going to buy and everything and that thing can rise 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 up like that you know it's like in the natural it cannot happen but God may use in this coming day certain different things like that you know and there's many other stories I've seen this guy in Texas a black guy nappy hair and everything you wouldn't think he, he was in, into this and he's like on his cell phone taking pictures and giving a insight on YouTube about you know the different coin and things like that and how it will skyrocket and stuff like that it's like wow God can use the foolish things to confound the wise and this is only one small sliver in the other ways he can bless and move things in this world you know so for those who have been listening and facing some financial hardships and troubles and have no hope in this world system and you say hey I need to at least get into the kingdom of God and I have a way to believe God to meet my needs. We can lead you in a prayer and you can say, Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died, rose from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father. I make him Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord, for filling me with your Holy Spirit, speaking in other tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. Right there online, you can tap in wordoftruthmaui.org and hit that green button. gives you an opportunity to sow seed into the ministries, 22 outreaches, and towards Tachilek, Myanmar. You also... You know, people here have been a great part in providing rice, oil, and different things to help the people there. And it's in your seeding that you cleanse your heart, free up yourselves from greed and hoarding to move into surplus. And we just pray, pray that in these coming days, week, God opens his windows of heaven, pours out supernatural blessings in your financial portfolio. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.